Hello and what's up YouTube? In this video, I will show you how I repair the charging system of my 10-year-old CRF250L. This is the problem that I have. We can hear the engine struggling to crank but will not start. This condition is an indication of a weak battery. So I go ahead and measure the battery voltage. I'm only getting about 11.48 volts, which is too low to start the engine. Following the service manual of the CRF250L, I go ahead and measure the leakage current just to make sure there are no short circuit connections somewhere that is draining the battery. It is the current drain on the battery while the bike is not in use. And my measurement is within the specified leakage current as per the service manual. At this point, it is possible that only the battery is the problem. I need the battery charged and the bike running for my next test. So I go ahead and jump start it with my wife's car. As you can see, the bike started normally. With the engine running, I measured the battery voltage once more after I disconnected the jumper cables. The battery voltage is very low at only about 10 volts and does not increase even if I rev the engine. So it is clear that the charging system of the bike is not charging the battery as it should be. Normally, we would expect a voltage of about 14 volts on the battery with the engine running. To further check the charging system of the bike, I need to access the rectifier regulator. To do that on the CRF250L, we need to remove the right side plastic panels. In the meantime, I hook the motorcycle battery to my car battery once more to give it a little bit more charge. I am confident that the battery is not the problem. The regulator is on the right side of the bike near the gas tank and uh, here it is. There is a 5 pin connector on the regulator that I pulled out and we will check all the pins with a multimeter one by one following the instructions on the service manual. I first check the resistance between the three yellow wires coming from the alternator coils. I am getting around 0 0.5 ohms so it seems to be normal. Next, I switch my multimeter to DC voltmeter and measure the battery charging line. I probe between the green wire and the red with white wires and I am getting the battery voltage which is good. Then I check the continuity between the green wire and the chassis ground. I am getting good continuity which is also good. Now I did all the procedures in the workshop manual and as it says right here that if all the test results are normal, we need to replace the regulator rectifier unit. Now, it was not mentioned in the manual, but I think we should check the alternator AC voltage output because the regulator can still be good. To do that, the engine should be running. I switched my multimeter to AC voltmeter and measured the voltage between any two of the three yellow wires from the alternator. And unfortunately, I'm only getting very low voltage, about 1.5 volts. I would expect that the AC output voltage of the alternator is way higher than 12 volts to charge the battery. So in this case, there is no way the regulator will output the required DC charging voltage if the AC input voltage is very low. So I am not yet replacing the regulator until I can confirm that it is really bad. What I need to do now is to look at the alternator inside the crankcase and investigate why it is not giving out sufficient voltage. 
we will need to remove the left crankcase cover for that. So, first thing is to drain the oil. Then I remove the drive sprocket cover and the shifter pedal. I then disconnect the alternator 3-pin connector and the black connector from this side of the bike. We have to release the cable from this small metal clamp by bending it out a little bit. I then carefully pull out the neutral switch connector somewhere under the drive sprocket. With the cables disconnected, I then remove all the bolts and the left crankcase cover. Engine oil will gush out from the removed crankcase cover, so it is a good idea to have something below to catch the oil. The stator in the left crankcase cover is attracted to the permanent magnet of the rotor, so it kind of resists being pulled out. Let's take a closer look at what we got here. It is immediately obvious that these two poles of the stator have the coil insulation burned out. That is definitely causing the trouble with my bike's charging system. To remove the stator, I undo the three bolts that Hold it into the crankcase cover. The pulser has to be removed as well via the two more bolts because the wiring of the pulser and the stator are joined in the same cable. At this point, the easier way forward is to buy a brand new replacement stator. This part has a lot of metal on it and I don't think it is cheap. I always want to save some money, so what I did is manually rewind the burned out coils. I made a separate video about rewinding, so please check it out if you want to save money and rewind the stator yourself. Once you got the stator sorted out, either by buying a new one or refurbishing your existing stator, it's time to put it back to the left crankcase cover. The service manual calls for applying a sealant to the cable wire rubber grommet and thread locking compounds to the bolts. Then the rest is just the reverse of the removal procedure. Let me know in the comments below if you want a copy of the CRF250L service manual and I will gladly send you a PDF file copy. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos that you may find interesting. Finally, with the regulator rectifier connected, I checked the charging line voltage both with the engine running and with the engine not running. The standard reading should be greater when the engine is running, but less than 15.5 volts. I revved the engine and I am getting an almost constant 14.3 volts, which is perfect. And when I turn off the engine, the battery voltage is about 13 volts, which shows the battery is fully charged. And that concludes the troubleshooting and repair of my Honda CRF250L charging system. I am glad that even though I had a breakdown, I was able to repair it myself. 
learn from the experience, and save a lot of money in the process. I hope you liked the video and thank you very much for watching.